Hey everybody, Brian Goulet here of GouletPens.com, and today I want to talk to you about the Keras Customs Fountain K. Now, if you want to get an overview of the Keras Customs brand and a little bit of their history, check out this video I did here, which goes more in depth about that. The Fountain K is really a kind of a cool pen. So partly the appeal of Keras Customs, it's an American-made brand, all here in the US, and it's a very kind of industrial look. And this particular pen is actually the second of Keras Customs fountain pens. They have a larger pen called the Ink, which is kind of like the big brother to the Fountain K, and I have a full review on that that you can also check out if you click on this link here. So part of the appeal of these pens is this very industrial, kind of tactical feel to it. If you want a fountain pen that is so durable you can literally throw it across the parking lot, pick it up and write with it again, I think that is going to be the kind of pen for you. So let's check it out. Now there are three different materials that you can get for this pen. They're all metal, but basically you have an option for aluminum, brass, and copper. The aluminum is going to give you the most variety because they anodize them which is a color coating process that's uh, one of the most durable coating processes you can get for metal. It's going to be much more durable than it would be if it was a, um, you know, a lacquer coating or, or any type of powder coating or anything like that. Anodizing, it's a rather expensive process, but it really has kind of a signature look to it, and it's very, very uh, durable. It's going to hold up over time. And then the brass and the copper are going to be raw materials, so those are actually going to patina very nicely over time as they're exposed to the elements and to the oils in your fingers. You can polish them up if you want to, but I mean, come on, the patina is going to look awesome. There is also a raw aluminum. It's called a tumbled raw. So it's not anodized like the other ones. It's just the bare aluminum. It's kind of roughed up, scuffed up looking, very kind of earthy industrial feel to it. So all in all, we have 12 anodized aluminum, one tumbled raw aluminum, a brass, and a copper. That makes it for 15 total color options for the Fountain K. Holding it in my hand, the grip is smooth but not too slick. Again, it depends which grip you're talking about here. The black one's going to be a little slicker. The raw metal colors are not going to be quite as slick. Not textured per se, but it's, it's got a slight grip to it. It's not going to be slipping around in your fingers. The diameter is very reasonable. It's not a huge pen, so it's going to be uh, a little bit on the smaller side. I would definitely say this is going to be comfortable for people with smaller hands. The weight, it's really going to depend on which metal you're going with. The aluminum one with the aluminum grip, uh, converter included, is going to be 28 grams, which is not super, super heavy. For a metal pen like this, it's pretty reasonable. But when you get up in the brass and copper ones, the weight jumps up significantly. If you go with the all copper version, you're talking about 78 grams, which makes it one of the heaviest pens that we have on our site. So technically this pen can post, but it doesn't feel really like you should be doing it much. It's like the threads of the cap right on the bare body, and I just, I would not recommend doing it. Um, plus, it's going to throw the weight off and everything. It's really kind of meant to be held in your hand unposted. It's got a good length to it. The body is a nice length, so even if you have larger hands like me, given that it's a slightly smaller pen, uh, it's still going to be comfortable even when it's unposted. The grip itself um, can kind of throw the weight off a little bit. It's got a nice even balance to it, uh, when it with the aluminum grip on the aluminum pen. So if you go with, say, a copper or a brass grip on the aluminum pen, it's going to front weight the pen just a little bit more because that weight is you know, somewhat significant. So it has a bit of a tapered grip with kind of a flare at the end. So your fingers rest uh, pretty securely right there in the grip. If you hold your pen a little bit further back, kind of like I do with my thumb, then your thumb's going to be on those threads, which are a little sharp. It may bother some people. It doesn't bother me, but uh, it's just something to kind of watch out for if that's something you're particularly sensitive to. So the nib options for the Fountain K. These are all stainless steel nibs made by Bach in Germany, very respected uh, nib maker, and the options are extra fine, fine, medium, and broad. And if you're wondering about the size of the nib itself, it's the exact same size as Kaweco. So if you're some familiar with those nibs, uh, these ones are going to be identical in size to that. One thing to look out for on the Fountain K nibs is there is no size indicator stamped onto the nib itself. The way that you can tell the nib size is by this coloring that they have on the nib housing. Extra fine is white. No indicator, or black, I guess, is fine. Yellow is medium, and red is broad. 
these nibs pretty much live up to what you would expect from a German uh, European nib. The extra fines are not super, super fine. And there's actually not a great deal of difference between extra fine and fine. These nibs are all fairly smooth, uh, actually smoother than I expected them to be. And the flow is nice and consistent, a little bit on the wet side. So if you like to have pens that uh, are gonna give you good shading, I think these are gonna be uh, more in, in line with other brands such as, you know, Kueco, uh, Lamy, and that type of stuff. So let's talk about the details on the cap. There's not a lot of fancy embellishments and stuff like that. But it's a pretty straightforward design. It does have a triple start thread on the cap, which means that you can uh, start the rotation of the pen in any of three places. So it makes it pretty easy to catch, but the threads are a little long, so it's about a one and three quarter rotation to actually close the pen all the way. So it basically means you have to do a couple of rotations with your hand when you're capping and uncapping the pen. There's no center band, there's no finial, but it does have one kind of nice detail. It has a knurled uh, engraving on the top and that's called knurling, for those of you that didn't know. And it makes it so that when you go to uncap the pen, you have a nice firm place to grip onto it. And it has this really meaty clip, which is, you know, machine screwed into the top. So it, it looks pretty cool and it's extremely stiff. Initially, I thought this was kind of a bad thing because it doesn't bend as much as normal clips. However, as I was using it on, you know, my jeans and some of my other thicker clothing, it does take a little bit of force to get it on there, but honestly, it feels really secure and you got to kind of yank it a little bit to pull it off so I know it's not going to go flying out of your pocket, which for a pen that's a little bit heavier like this, it's actually probably a really good thing that it has a really stiff clip like this. It does just mean that if you're going to be wearing it on dress clothes or something like that, it may be a little bit of aggressive of a clip for some of your more delicate clothing. So to keep in with the theme of the kind of practical appeal of this pen, it comes with a standard international cartridge converter option. They actually include five black short standard international cartridges. It also will take a standard international long cartridge if you happen to prefer those ones. And it does come with a standard international converter as well for use with bottled ink. Now because these are metal pens, these are definitely not eyedropper convertible pens because the ink will react with the metal inside the body of the pen. So just stick with cartridges and converters. So what does this pen really compare to? Ugh, not much because it's a pretty unique design. However, the most obvious one to compare it to is the big brother of the Fountain K, the Keras Customs Ink Fountain Pen. Now this is an even larger pen available in all the same color options. It does have a larger nib on it and it's just a heavier, bigger pen in general. Very kind of similar appeal to it. A little, uh, I would call it kind of a chunkier design, um, but this pen is gonna be uh, for those who have even larger hands that want an even heavier pen than what the Fountain K has to offer. And then the other one that is kind of comparable is Kueco uh, actually has a couple of different pens uh, in their, their Sport series. So they have a Brass Sport, the All Sport, which is a series of colored aluminums, and they have a couple of like raw brass and, um, you know, kind of these like denim, you know, tumbled looking designs as well. The design of the pen is a little bit different, but the appeal in terms of that raw metal is very similar in that way. Now let's talk about the price. It's actually fairly reasonable for what you're getting. Given that it's American made and these are all machined one at a time, you know, out of solid metal, you're looking at a price between $75 and $125, really basically depending on which metal you get. The aluminum ones are definitely gonna be on the cheaper end. The copper and the brass are gonna be on the more expensive end just because the raw price of that metal is more expensive. And it depends anywhere in that price range, depending on which grip and other things that you get in there. So you got some options, but that's your range. So if you like the Fountain K and you want to check out more detailed information about it, we have full specs, lots of other pictures and good stuff like that on GouletPens.com. You can also buy it there if you'd like. And if you have any specific questions, you can ask them on YouTube or here on the blog. If you like this video and you want more like it, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching and right on.